Hello, and welcome to English Micro Listening Lessons, where you can improve your listening skills by learning how sounds change or disappear in spoken English. This series of videos can be watched in any order and can be used for self-study by independent English language learners or in a classroom by English language teachers. There's information in the box below the video for teachers. Spoken English can be difficult to understand due to something called connected speech, which is the continuous stream of sounds without clear borders between a sequence of words. There, that's better. Some features of connected speech that can make sounds change or disappear at word boundaries and affect your ability to hear words you know are coalescence, elision, reduction, assimilation, resyllabification, linking, and intrusion. Don't worry. I'll explain what each of these means in this series. Awareness of them will improve your ability to hear individual words in the stream of spoken English. Ready? Here we go. What two words is he saying in the middle of this sentence? Your best friend to tell you if they knew. Would you want your best friend to tell you if they knew? If you're watching this with someone else or with your classmates, Pause the video and compare your answers. He said, best friend. Would you want your best friend to tell you if they knew? However, the way he actually said it was without the T. It sounded like he just said, best friend. Listen again. Best friend best friend. Why is it that he doesn't pronounce the T? That can make it confusing to identify an easy word that you know in spoken English. It's because of a feature of connected speech called elision. Elision is when a sound disappears, usually to make pronunciation easier. So in this case, with the elision of the t sound, often a final t sound in a word is not pronounced if that word ends with more than one consonant sound and the following word starts with a consonant sound. So here we've got best and it's got two consonant sounds at the end, s and t. And then the next word, word starts with f, with friend. So because it can be difficult for the mouth to pronounce three consonant sounds together to say st, f, often English speakers just drop the T that's in the middle of them. So you end up hearing in this instance, best friend. Please note that this can also happen inside just one word, like in the word Christmas. You won't usually hear the T. Um, because it's between the S and the M, and it's a, a consonant cluster. <clears throat> However, since we're focusing on features of connected speech that happen at word boundaries with more than one word, we're not going to be looking at single words with elision. We're only going to be looking at where it happens at the boundary of two words. Here are a few more examples. Number one, text message, text message. Number two, last night, last night. Number three, we walk slowly, we walk slowly. You might have noticed that in the third example, it ends up sounding like the present tense. We walk slowly. So that's where you might need to use context to realize that someone is talking about the past tense because they don't use the ed ending at all if the following word starts with a consonant and if there were consonants before it. 
Also, it might be a little confusing to see ED here when you thought we were only talking about the letter T. That's because the ED ending, often uh, with either adjectives or the past simple, can have a T sound. So we're only looking at the T sound, not just the letter T. So briefly on that, why an ED ending can sound like T is when the sound before ED is unvoiced, meaning your voice is not used to make the sound, just air along with your lips, teeth, tongue, or throat. Then ED is pronounced T, for example, like with K in talked and F in coughed, P in hoped, and S in promised. To help you notice elision of the t sound, I'm going to say 10 phrases. Please write what I say. Pause the video if you need to and number a paper or document one through 10. So again, listen and write or type what you hear. Each line will tell you the number of words in the phrase or sentence. I'm going to say each phrase three times, fast, then slower, then fast. Here we go. Number one, next door. Next door. Next door. Number two, first floor. First floor. First floor. Number three, East Coast. East Coast. East Coast. Number four, we ask mom. We ask mom. We ask mom. Number five, he worked late. He worked late. He worked late. Number six. They felt bad. They felt bad. They felt bad. Number seven, it must be true. It must be true. It must be true. Number eight. For the most part. For the most part. For the most part. Number nine. I left the office early. I left the office early. I left the office early. Number 10. He's the most popular player. He is the most popular player. He 
He's the most popular player. So again, if you're watching with someone else or with your teacher and classmates, pause the video and compare your answers. If you need to, go back and replay parts of the dictation. Here are the answers. If you need to, pause the video now while you check them. The phrase in number eight, for the most part, is a saying that just means usually. So sometimes practicing pronouncing a feature of connected speech can help you hear it when other people use it. So I'm going to say each phrase two times, and I'd like you to repeat after me. Try not to pronounce the t sound at the end of the first word there in the, the two-part words. Okay, here we go. Number one, next door. Next door. Number two, first floor. First floor. Number three. East Coast, East Coast. Number four, we asked mom. We asked mom. Number five, he worked late. He worked late. Number six, they felt bad. They felt bad. Number seven, it must be true. It must be true. Number eight, for the most part. For the most part. Number nine, I left the office early. I left the office early. Number 10. He's the most popular player. He's the most popular player. So to review, often a final t sound in a word is not pronounced if that word ends with more than one consonant sound and the following word starts with a consonant. So for example, we won first place. We won first place. Now it's your turn. Think of another example of the elision of the t sound at the end of one word and write it in the comments or pause the video and share it with your teacher and classmates. Now for the real world challenge. Find an example of the elision of the t sound at the end of a word in a recorded or real life conversation and post it in the comments or share it with your teacher and classmates. Thank you for watching this English micro listening lesson. I hope it has helped you to better hear how sounds change or disappear in spoken English. Bye.